Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by BlackRifleCoffee.com. You sound excited about half of our guests. Today's episode, though, you were genuinely stoked all day long for this this woman. Yeah, because I think this I think this one is going to be very interesting because for the first time we have a very well educated human on on the show that is going to be very confused by me and you psyche. <laughs> <laughs> I would say more you and that's look oh, that's just oh. me being real. Why don't you why don't you give her a proper introduction? Okay, so today we have Dr. Janelle McCauley. Uh, we have a doctor? Colonel we have a real doctor? Retired on. from the United States Air Force. Doctor and pilot. She's a doctor pilot. What? Welcome. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. I'm very excited to be here. I'm Look, I'm excited to have an intelligent conversation for once on this show. This is amazing for me. <laughs> uh, additionally, Ross, we have Mr. Tim Pachesa to my right, who is a TACP of 24 years. And we have our big bald baby. The Man. doctor's hot, but she's married. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she is. She is married. Okay, uh, yeah, that was that was show. that was my first smoke question. hammer. Smoke hammer. <laughs> All that and brains too. Well, welcome. I mean that with that most respect. Welcome to the show, uh, guys. We we appreciate uh, you guys being on. Jared, you were actually at at her seminar yesterday, were you not? Yes, yes. She did. She did a speech yesterday at the Air Force Sergeants Associations Convention. Uh, did an hour long. Uh, seminar on what she's going to get into with us today and I, I was super excited to bring her out here because I know Ross you're going to be super into this Baker's going to ask a million questions 50% of which are going to be stupid but that's why you're here provocative okay. provocative right. fantastic you, so real, real mentally quick provocative not like yeah yeah well, what did you get your degree in what type of doctor are you is it psychology is it, is it medicine actually I have my doctorate in strategy is the area that uh, my actual degree is in. But my focus was in strategic health and human performance. Because as you know, strategy is kind of a big, broad topic. So when you get a degree in something like that, you have to kind of niche yourself in a focused area. So really what I studied was how to create the most badass human weapon system for the military. And so you can't you know, analyze that and spend a good portion of your academic career looking into it without looking at everything from sleep to nutrition to how our minds work. And uh, so are you like really that doctor from Top Gun? I'd like to think I'm better than that. Ah, okay? look at because that. Here's, here's the That's thing. That's a great the answer. Thing. She's hotter here's than Kelly McGillis, too, aren't you? I've seen <laughs> pictures of you. See, here's the thing. Did Kelly McGillis actually fly the plane? No. Right? No. See, that's where I bring but did Kelly a different McGillis aspect ever do it. anything doctor-worthy in the entire movie? She wore that leather jacket. She just slept with students. <laughs> and rode on I the mean, motorcycle. I mean, let's be honest here. I mean, you know I'm the, the largest anti-Top Gun person in yeah. the room, so I'm just saying. Yeah, she drove she, a Carmen Ghia, too, with a oh, shitty little car. God, that was dumb. <laughs> but, Ross, let's get into you real quick before we, we, we move into that, like how we came um, across her. Like, so, so Tim introduced us to her, and can you kind of give us a history of how you had first met her and, and kind of how we all came today on the set? Yeah, so uh, absolutely. Like uh, like JT said, I was a career TACP doing that gig and then got picked up to be a, a command chief in the Air Force. So a uh, senior enlisted dude inside an Air Force wing, and my first wing was in New Jersey at Joint Base McGuire Dix Lakehurst. And so I, I showed up there, and uh, Dr. McCauley was then Lieutenant Colonel McCauley and was a squadron commander for the Operational Support Squadron. And uh, so, so we kind of met that way. I, I did in briefs and with all the different squadron commanders and kind of met. And, and she had talked about some of the, uh, the wellness stuff that, that she's going to get into. Baker, he's only gone to Air Force boarding school, so he doesn't know what an operational support squadron is. Can well, you explain well, what, what that was? I did that your tour way? yesterday, too, so I got that going for me. Okay. Oh, all nice. Right. So, so, so her, her squadron kind of ran everything. They have the people who run, run the airfield. She owned the air traffic controllers. She owned uh, a couple soldiers, a lot of civilians, some Navy folks as well at Lakehurst. And that's the place where the Hindu Hindenburg went down. So all the behind the scenes, I, outside of a regular operational squadron, all the behind the scenes stuff to facilitate the flying and all that encompasses, she she owned. Awesome. Awesome. Wow. Well, yeah. Usually somebody who owns all that stuff and is as smart as her doesn't look like her. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Where did, where did you go to college? Where, where did you get your, your degree at? Uh, well, I originally went to the Air Force Academy. 
Oh, wow. Knock the ring. Look at knock that. the ring. I know. I know. Well, it was either <laughs> that or I wanted to go dance on Broadway. Oh. And my parents were kind of. We were yeah. talking Funny, like literally before is that you yours? showed up. You, that's, same same thing. Same we were dream. talking about <laughs> musicals, and yeah. I was telling JT uh, that you technically don't have to see a movie that's a musical if you just listen to the words of the song. So we were talking about Rent. But you don't need to watch Rent to know that everyone has AIDS. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in Wicked, you Ephaba is green. You don't need to watch that play to know that. I mean, have you seen The Greatest Showman? <laughs> I have. Okay. Yes. Is it not the greatest movie? It is the greatest and all movie. You do you, did, all I, you did was listen to the soundtrack. What? And I'm like, fuck, watch the, the music movie. for the soundtrack. What? I'll watch the movie. I like the soundtrack. <sighs> I'm not saying I'm not going to watch the movie. I'm simply saying the soundtrack is awesome. And then you assaulted me verbally. <laughs> the soundtrack is awesome, exactly. but the, mov the movie is really great too. I think the way yes. it connects all the music yes. together, right? Now, I I, I did I, I loved it. I haven't made it all the way through though. I'm too drunk by the end of it. I pass out, so I don't know how it ends. You are a I mean, who you gets are drunk a watching that movie. <laughs> like I think I mean I've only gotten to the part where I assume he's going to start liking the new singer girl. And then, and then I'm, by then, I'm like too wasted. I pass you out. Are, we, have, we have a thespian <laughs> among us, folks. <laughs> so you went. What, what would be the psychology behind somebody who gets drunk at a child's movie? I'd, just, I'd like to hear her opinion on that. That's, that's Is a, it a child's movie? That might be a, yeah, a, a deeper gee. conversation here. If we're going to go all the way that far. Um, I mean, there's a lot of things to unpack. Uh, no, so I, I went to the Air Force <laughs> yeah. Academy, um, and my uncle had been a helicopter pilot in the Marine Corps, and so he used to take me to the air shows. And between that and then literally, imagine a seven-year-old girl. My dad was a cop, and he would take me around places, and he would tell anyone who would listen. He's like, this is my daughter. She's going to be a fighter pilot or a submarine warfare commander. Ooh. And I just look up at him and be like, what? I'm going to be a dancer. And he would say, like just keep saying that. No, no, no. You you could go in the military. You could be anything you want to be. And at the time, those jobs weren't even open to women, right? Like the 80s. Let's just go ahead and say, thank God you weren't a submarine warfare commander. <laughs> no, could you imagine? Yeah. Like, I would have not. No, it's I a way cooler well. title than it is job. Yes. Yes, by far. <laughs> by far. But yeah, I was on the path. I went Air Force Academy. I went to uh, Penn State. Actually, I got my first master's degree there. Uh, in e exercise physiology. Okay. Is that too big of a word? No. <laughs> I mean, do, you, do you know who else has a, a master's degree in exercise physiology from Penn State? Who? Dr. T.C. Clark, who's the guy that turned Nike around. There you go. Yep. Wow. See? Gr wow, look yeah. at that. Great Information people. we don't fucking need, Baker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> JT. Our, our drink, our, actually, our, our drinking bros sports. <laughs> go ahead. I'm sorry, Ross. Our, our drinking bros sports co-host, he, he's, he's got his master's from Penn State as well. NBA. I went to Ohio State, so oh, we're all Big Ten today that? on the program. Yeah, Dan. Dan he did? did? Oh, I didn't even know that. He did? Dan oh, Holloway, yeah. yeah. Master's he was in here Penn earlier State. talking shit to everybody. So. Oh, fellow <laughs> Nitty Lion. <laughs> nice, nice, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then where? Then I and then, then I went off, and this is where it makes, uh, you know, com in the comparison of me and Kelly McGillis from Top Gun, I then spent the next 13 years as an operator I don't in like the Air that. Force. I don't like that comparison. Exactly. Like I, I came from the life and then I got the opportunity to go back to school and get my, my doctorate through Air University. And really what I wanted to study was why does life suck so bad? Yeah. And why can't I figure out how to do all of this better? It because didn't sound like your life sucked so bad when you were doing all these cool things. You know what? Like from the outside, everybody would have been like, man, she's got her shit together. Right. But I was really struggling as an individual to be a mom and to be a, a wife and to be a badass pilot and to be a leader and all that pressure on us, right, to be perfect at everything. And um, I was. I was damn good at what I did. But I was on this pathway where I was going to hit a brick wall. And I eventually did. And when I hit the brick wall is when I went back to school and just kind of said, there's got to be a better way to succeed in life and handle the stress and pressure of what we're asked to do in the military, but what really everybody's asked to do in life today. So that's kind of uh, the path I took. I was curious. Good path? Great path. Okay. Great path. Because I think now I have not only the experience and background of living the life beforehand and then researching the topic and then applying my research to improve uh, the way that I led later as a squadron commander and then, um, you know, how I've been able to impact uh, different corporations and the, the military. And So what you're saying, if life sucks, get a PhD and it'll be all right. 
<laughs> for me, that was the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this is this is perfect to go into now to explain to Ross and Baker, kind of uh, the the whole your whole your whole thing, the thing that we watched yesterday. Yes. So what basically this the solution I came up with through my research and and what I really looked at was how do we build those badass um, human weapon systems in in the military to succeed at work and at life um, in the name of high performance is really what I was looking at. And I found that if you think about high performance, I think most of us know that it takes hard work. Right? You got to work hard. Not nothing's easy. And then you have to be properly trained and equipped for what you do. And that can lead you to a to a area of high performance in some to some degree. But if you want to sustain that path, you really need to get command of your mindset. And so that's really what I focused a lot of my my work on, especially in my research and then lately in my focus with the military, is how do we get command of our mindset? How do we capture the high performance aspect of our minds to help us perform better at all facets of our life? And it really comes down to this idea of living more in the present moment. Because, you know, there are thoughts that go off in our heads all the time that take us on tangents, that distract us, that keep us mind wandering, that keep us in regret and worry. And I love using the word catastrophizing about the future. And, um, you know, it's kind of like you, you send an email and the person doesn't respond back. And then you tell yourself the story. You're like, oh, they're mad at me. You know, freaking jerk. Like, why Why aren't they responding? She doesn't like me anymore. That's people, why she's not responding. People that, that use she's found another receipts dude. on texts. Ugh. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. They're the people who can't break out of the psyche, right? That in their mi their mindset that controls every interaction that they have, gives them feedback in their mind that's a story or that's a worry or that's something, some piece of overwhelm and stress. And so really this, this the way to get that sustainable pathway is to get command of your mindset. And, um, or at least that, that's like the foundational piece. And I also talk a lot about, you know, sleep is important and nutrition is important. Well, let's, let's, let's dive stuff. into mind wandering because okay. you got to tell these guys the statistics on this because, and your, your visual aid with the like VCR controls was perfect. Like, yes. So. <laughs> so yeah, so mind wandering. Um, first, I think that there's sometimes is some confusion because some people say, oh, it's good. I was mind wandering and, and letting my creativity come out. And there, there's two separate brain functions that occur. Mind wandering is a distraction. It is unintentional. You know, you, you read a page in a book and you get to the bottom and then you're like, wait, I don't even remember what the heck I just read. That is mind wandering because your mind went off on a tangent and you didn't want it to go there. It was mentally time traveling. Uh, daydreaming, on the other hand, is productive and I'm going to sit, think about a problem, go through my thoughts right now, try to come up with a solution. And then in the middle of that, you start thinking about what's for dinner or, you know, what you did yesterday or the person who didn't yeah, respond to your daydreaming email. Daydreaming is way more design focused. Yes. No matter what you're thinking about, you're designing if it's a vacation you want to take, but you're... You're actively thinking that way exactly. as opposed to kind of where, where the stress curve is. Yeah, yeah. Know. The unintentional, right? Um, there's no efficiency and productivity really in that mind wandering space, I would say. And then um, the stats and what the research really tells us is that we do that, that mind wandering thing, almost half of our waking moments. And they say it doesn't matter what activity you're doing. It will still be half of your waking moments. I think they even put like having sex. Yes. As one of I've the definitely options. definitely done it. And you're mind wandering. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. What do you mind wander about? Everything. It, like, wait, hold on. Are you really? I'm like where to hang the fucking crossbow. Is that because you're mind wandering or you're trying to take your, your get out of the moment so you can go no, longer? No, no, no. I mean, yes, there's both with that. But seriously, question, though, I've done I that catch shit. myself like, do it all the time. hey, where do I want to put the crossbow? And I'm like, God, why am I thinking about that right now? So you can last longer. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, I, 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 I under, JT, I, I understand what you're saying. Like, there, there's moments in life where you're so focused on something else that you can't enjoy what is in front of you. So, yeah. Well, like, dude, there's a lot of guys that, that, are, that are thinking about their fantasy football player. <laughs> Hoping that Aaron Rodgers throws for 28 on a Monday night game during sex when they should be focusing on their partner. <laughs> well, now, now, That's the now, truth. here's, now here's the, 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 the mind blown. It, it, she's going to tell you a way to stop this. Yeah. Concerta? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Okay. Oh, shit, it works. <laughs> what is that? Uh, adult Ritalin. Oh, God, no. No, no drugs. It's not a drug. 
I'm 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 anti drug. Yeah. No mind drugs. <laughs> Holistic well being. That's really my focus. There's a better way, right? Because when you take something like Ritalin, there's a lot of side effects, right, that come with it. I'm talking to some to you about something that's you know grounded, that is good for you, and will hopefully heal a whole bunch of things that you're suffering from. And I can see you're suffering from quite a bit. So <laughs> for Baker Levitt, oh, Ross God. Patterson, and Jared oh, Taylor, God. this is Drinking Bros. Whatever. Come out of here. Baker oh. is bright red right now, God, which you can see because we're running the cameras, right, Dave? I can't tell if Hell she's being yes. serious or she's like oh, fucking no, she with she knows. Me. She knows. I'm not suffering from a damn thing. You know. You know there's things wrong with Jared, right? No, she's talking about me. <laughs> Oh, I am ex- both, extremely both, both Baker right and Jared. Yeah, <laughs> he's sweating a lot. His, can his you fucking his, his fists are red, Ross? <laughs> I'm gonna put a dip in. Can you can you can you diagnose him right now? And and you I'll, barely know. I'll Baker, tell you this. Correct. Go for it. I will answer anything you want to ask me truthfully. Well, well, here's the thing. Yes. Here, but here's the yes. thing about my degree. I don't diagnose. Okay. I just you can provide talk about okay, an we'll assessment. Get, we'll, we'll just right? best like guess. Take a chance. But <sighs> what's can, where do we want to start? Like, can we start with your diet or your sleep? Your yeah, sleep sure. patterns? Absolutely. Ooh. Let's start with sleep. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. How much do you sleep at Fire night? Fire away. A uh, minimum of eight hours. Okay, that's good. That's I, I good. Know that. And for all, the, all of those listeners out there who are like, I only need four hours of sleep and I'm pretty awesome. That's bullshit. You, it, it is. It's, it's a load of crap. Like, you're, all human bodies are made the same and they need sleep. 68 right. hours really is the, the sweet spot. Because you know, how long can you go without food? Uh, quite a while. Yeah, like almost oh, a couple he weeks. Claims, he <laughs> claims that you will never hear him complain about being hungry or, or tired. Like or I, tired. I, I don't complain about I don't complain about those things. What good is that going to do to me? He said he pretty much Nothing. is a Navy SEAL. Eighty five percent a Navy SEAL. I've never said that. That's a joke. But, <laughs> <laughs> no, but, no, but my point is this one. I'm never going to complain about being hungry or being tired because complaining doesn't accomplish a fucking thing. True. Very okay. true. And that's actually yep. what we talk about right. with mindfulness, right? So, um, no, but I, I, I'm not one of, I eat when I'm hungry, but normally my, what ideal eating situation mm-hmm. for me, mm-hmm. wake up in the morning, one scoop of casein, one scoop of whey protein, one uh, handful of greens, a full serving of fat. At 10 o'clock, six ounces of protein, two handfuls of greens, half serving of fat, 30 grams of carbohydrates. Two o'clock, repeat that same meal, but break up the ratios or the macros are the same. Right. At uh, normally I train from when when I'm training I train from basically from three to five so I'll take twenty or thirty milligram thirty grams of whey protein and thirty grams of carbohydrates. All right, dinner which is the same meal macro structure as the ten and two p.m. and then before bed it is I'm sorry forty five grams of I'm sorry workout is forty five grams of whey forty five grams of carbs. Uh, pre pre bed meal is no fat. Um, 60 grams of carbs and uh, 30 grams of whey protein or casein. I'm sorry, case, uh, casein shake before I go to bed. Okay. Um, can I offer two suggestions? Sure. First, what is your energy expenditure during those two hour workout? Like, where, where are you focusing your time? Is it, it anaerobic, it, aerobic? Yeah. Uh, so, like, my whole thing is like segmented training gets you segmented results. So what it's going to be mostly like if it's a powerlifting meet or something where I'm trying to train for like a, an, an upcoming elk hunt or something where I'll be hiking my butt off. Uh, normally it's high intensity because uh, volume doesn't impress me. I don't really give a shit about it. I mean, we can go lift hundreds of thousands of pounds over hours and it's mm-hmm. not going to accomplish much. So big intensity, low volume. Okay. That's actually what I was going right. to suggest for you. And I wake up in the morning, yeah. I walk a mile. Okay. Uh, and then I walk a mile uh, in the evening after I eat. And I like to do like a walk on last. Hey, that's because he's generally being kicked Baker. out of his campsite by the park <laughs> rangers. He used to walk. Yes, Ross. When, when you walk a mile, is it, in, is it in your own shoes or someone else's? <laughs> no, it, clear, kidding, it clears sorry. your mind. You know, you know I had yeah. to. Yeah. Take, put your phone away. <laughs> it does. Put on headphones, music. It does. Walk. Yeah. I, I enjoy it. That's awesome. So you're a music or podcast kind of person when you walk? or Music, not podcast. Music. Yes, and ma'am. when you do, when you walk, are you... You know, is that where you daydream? Like you productively think through problems or do you let... Solve problems. Run solve through problems. things in my head. Like, and especially in the morning on that first that walk in the morning. And normally it's more than a mile, mile, mile and a half, but it's just kind of processing the things that I have to do in front of me before the, the things that are in front of me I need to get done. The important things during that time period will come to the surface and kind of the minutia stuff will kind of fall away. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, okay, these are my primary goals for the day. These are the things that I need to accomplish. And then once those are done... Um, Focus on the little things, things like that. 
Okay. Okay. Um, Because, you know, what we're going to talk about is diving into this idea of living, you know, more in the present moment. And you have to practice, right? You have to strengthen your attention system to live more in the present moment so that you're not mind wandering half your day. And so a lot of people think, oh, well, meditation, you have to do it, you know, like in this quiet space, you know, sitting cross-legged on a pillow. And that's not true. Like your one mile walk, you could spend some of that time also exercising your brain, right? While you exercise your body. So that's what I would, and we'll get into the the real dynamics of that in a little bit, but that's what I would suggest that maybe you integrate into that mile walk you have. And then the other thing, uh, you know, our bodies are meant to naturally kind of detox. And I'm sensing with the, the pattern that you have set up, um, and I know there's different research that'll say different things, but the the most prominent that I have found, when you don't allow 12 hours between last meal and first meal, you don't get or give your body its own opportunity to naturally detox. And so what happens is we end up a little puffy or we end up with like a kind of a mucus lining all over our cells that prevents them from performing at their optimal. So I would just say you don't have to do it every I day. Mm-hmm. I haven't either. But um, I would suggest, you know, maybe, you know, one day a week at least or maybe a week at a time, like allowing your so a like 12, a 12 hour, hour fasted state. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of wow. power in fasting. Um, yeah. So Ross and you Baker, what she's about to tell you guys, you know, we learned yesterday in her uh, symposium. What do you call that? Seminar. Seminar. Yeah. yeah. Seminar. Seminar. Uh, we get into I d- the just, just wait. I did it last night while I was hanging out with my girlfriend and every time she would speak to me I would do it three I would I would do it three times I have never been that attentive in my life I don't think okay but before we get into that <laughs> does she have does she have anything love it to and do? I will take a check from your girlfriend later perfect <laughs> does she have anything to do with where I was yesterday no the spec ops no training facility no. well well so okay. so so kind of so uh, Dr. McCauley when she was stationed out in Albuquerque she did a lot of stuff with the pararescue units out there so if you want to talk a little bit about that yeah, so I was, um, well, I was assigned to this uh, special operations wing. So we did uh, combat rescue and um, spec ups, uh, all the aviation um, training for those uh, airframes. And uh, stood up, my basic job was to stand up a pilot program for human performance optimization. So we actually, one of the biggest things we introduced were for all the students that were in, incoming and then the uh, most senior instructors. Because here's the thing, you have this life cycle of an airman or actually life cycle of any service member. And when you first start off, you're like bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and you're like, I'm freaking badass and I'm going to take the bull by the horns and be awesome at my job. And you are until you've been crawling around on your knees for 10 years and you've been lifting with your back and you've been, you know, powering through on energy drinks and Snickers bars. And so we have this, we had this cadre that were pretty much broken. And then we have these new students who are, need to be set up on a proper path. So we developed this performance skills workshop. We taught them um, mindfulness. Uh, we gave them a yoga class, which I will say was after the fact, like before the fact, nobody wanted to go, right? They kind of went a little kicking and screaming. But after the fact, it was like the highest rated thing. Everyone was like, I would have never tried yoga had you not forced me. But now that I've been through it, it was amazing, like so beneficial. Yeah, we were, uh, where did we do a tour yesterday, JT? What's the name of that place? You were at the Battlefield Airman Preparatory Course. Yeah, and uh, John Welburn practice. and I went, and um, I have never in my life seen anything set up for those participating to succeed in what they were doing amazing right blown away amazing so i've done some consulting with you know where a lot of that came from and i'm going to give him props um colonel ron stanger was the commander yeah, that's who took us yeah oh, did he? oh yeah. he took you around yeah so i've consulted with him we've worked together um and yes like what they've been able to do uh everything from the wearable technology to mobility kits oh, everything it, it really is yeah. um, amazing and so that's Right. I mean, we there's all these pockets, especially in the special operations community, where they're looking at ways to build this hum, you know, human weapon system to be better. And so really, the next step is kind of taking all of those best practices from these folks that are doing innovative and really interesting things and then bringing them together to, to really spread it out to more of the force to make everybody yeah, better. Was, I mean, a lot of the things that you're saying, um, they are doing very similar things, if not like you were mentioning yoga. They have, uh, I think, they have two uh, uh, recovery rollout sessions a yeah. day on mats where they're Matt, stretching, mobi- mobility every, work, and yep. stuff like that. Yeah, it was, yeah, it, yeah. Was a, it was phenomenal. 
We, it's amazing. We know most people who have back pain, especially lower back pain, yeah. they're like, oh, I need to take a drug for that. Really, all you have are tight hamstrings. Yeah, stretch your hamstrings. Right? Get those yeah. hamstrings. Exactly. And that's why a lot of chiropractors yeah. will even say, stop coming to me yeah, and go to yoga. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's interesting. Yeah. They, um, you know, we get into a, a thing where we try to treat the symptoms and not the problem. It's like in the 90s, you know, it's like, oh, pain. You're in pain. Here, let's give you a drug. No, no, no. Why is the person in pain? Let's treat the cause, not the end result. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's fascinating. So anyway, JT, yeah. has, has, you have three nuggets of information for us. What? Oh, I <laughs> focus <laughs> things. Yeah, no, yeah. She's got I want to hear it. Yeah, I, got, that's, that's I, I, got, I, got, I got more. Yeah. But, um, Boom. So, so yeah, where were we? We're, uh, mindfulness. Really, that is... Um, and I'll use the, the iPod yeah. analogy because I think most people relate to that. So if you think of your brain and your mind as an iPod, we spend a lot of time in fast forward, catastrophizing, worrying about the future. We also spend a lot of time in re- rewind, ruminating, regretting over the past. We don't really sit and play. And this is something that I learned from one of my colleagues, Dr. Amishi Ja at the University of Miami. She spent a lot of her time devoted to research in high stress populations like football players, lawyers, uh, the military, and trying to figure out how our attention systems work and how we can stop mind wandering and be more focused so that we can ultimately do our jobs better. And really, it's because our minds are so fantastic at mental time travel, we need a skill set to bring us back to the present. Um, And then you add on top of it today, I mean, just think I mean, I think 20 years ago when I was first starting college, we didn't have cell phones. Mm -mm. We didn't have social media. We didn't have email. No email, right? Nobody texted for a while, too. Even when it was available, it was almost weird to get a text. Yeah. You're like, what are you doing? Call me. Right. Exactly. (laughs) Like just a totally different world. And so now we have people going through these same types of stressful occupations. But then you put all of the pressure and stress that comes with what being connected 24 7 creates and really from a scientific perspective what it's doing to us is it keeps us in this chronically stressed sympathetic nervous system a activation constant refresh yeah yeah we're like of, of oh uh, i need to see him again i need to see again what happened now something right. bad is going to happen yep yep <laughs> co- co- completely right or we're constantly thinking about did i get another like on my facebook page yeah. or did somebody you know uh comment on my LinkedIn post, whatever it is, right? Or Twitter feed. It's a weird addiction. It is. There actually has been research that says we get the same brain dopamine response from a, a, like a like on your social media. It's like a validation. It is. It is. It's the the self-esteem piece and, and kind of makes us feel good, but it's kind of false, right? It gives you like that false sense of security and it keeps you in this heightened state of, uh, sympathetic nervous system activation and stress and that is actually not good for us there's a lot of research that says that's what leads to you know everything from cardiovascular disease um, heart disease we've got issues with diabetes you know uh you know we're finding that a lot of people in high stress occupations um you know will make the choice to either commit suicide or they're having heart attacks immediately after they you know pull back from whatever it is they're doing and it's just so much wear and tear on our bodies so mindfulness is a tool that can help us really get command of our mindset and get us back into this area where we can be focused we can pay attention and ultimately what i've been interested in my research we can be badass and high performing that makes sense. So how do you oh, yeah. how do you suggest uh, turning off the phone or turning off the emails, especially when you work a lot? Like, w- what's your biggest suggestion for that? Right. So, uh, it, you know, I would never say, hey, just get rid of all your social media and your phone. Like, that's not realistic. And I, even for me. Right. So I think what it is, is having limits and a healthy relationship with it. Because think about it like this. Back in the day, the sun went down and you went to bed. Right? You didn't have a choice. Like, it was dark. It's time to go to bed. The sun comes up. You wake up. Right? Our, our normal circadian rhythm was set with the seasons, with the light and the dark. The, with the temperature of the light. And the, the news yes. cycle. You, of, and the of, news cycle used to be that blues, way as well. You know, not having blues, shades of blue, light and, and things in your house because it will never shut your brain off because your, your, your head is, is programmed to see blue and know, okay, awake. Yes, exactly. And so we used to have that just as a normal part of our physiology. And now we have, we can work 24 seven. 
right? Do you have, you're connected 24 seven, you have an artificial light that keeps you up 24 seven. And so there's no work rest cycles anymore, right? So we have to artificially create them, I think, in our, in our lives and in our, um, uh, just the way that we interact with other human beings. And so it's about setting those work rest cycles and setting those limits on your social media, on your um, engagement with your phone. Like, you know, sometimes we stand in line somewhere, right? And what's the first thing everybody does when they stand, they have to stand in line and wait, right? They pull out their phone, pull out your phone. You pull out your phone, right? Because you're like, uh, I can't wait for five minutes in silence. What? Who does that? Yeah. I got to check my Twitter. I got to see what's going on in the news or whatever it is. And that's how, in fact, I'll, I'll, I'll you know, probably bet that most people don't even realize they're pulling out their phone. Yeah. You just do it. Yeah. Right? You have the, not yeah. even awareness that you're making the choice. And so that's really what I think mindfulness helps us get those choices back because when you're in that moment and you want to pull your phone you realize this is not a good choice there's like, a why don't sense I just of uncomfort un- of, of uncomfort standing not doing anything yeah. like it's like you don't want other people to look at you and you're just standing you look there. creepy yeah just yeah. standing there staring That's exactly at you. the way i feel. <laughs> absolutely look creepy it's like i need to look busy uh yeah but also <laughs> if you you know you made a comment people pulling their phones out i mean now people don't even put their phones away it just stays in their hand mm-hmm. like yeah. people don't put it in their pocket they just have their phone in there and they're walking around with their phone in their hand all the time yeah that's how um, connected and how kind of addictive um, these devices are. And so you really have to kind of develop the healthy relationship with them and kind of set aside. So I try to, and I'm not perfect at it either, but I try to set, you know, from this time to this time, I will engage on social media. And then later in the day, I'll go back to it and maybe do a couple hours at this point. But I try my best not to be the parent, because I've seen them, who's there playing baseball or soccer with their kids and they have their phone in their hand. I, I asked one of our uh, big celebrity friends kind of how he, how he managed his phone because I was curious about it. Like, because sh- I'm sure whatever I get, he gets by times 10. Mm-hmm. And he said the only, way, the only way he was able to stay sane is he does one hour in the morning and he turns it off and he does one hour at night and he turns it off. He goes, I answer everybody in, in these two windows and that's it. You know, my closest friends have got accustomed to it and they've, they've learned how it works. And other than that, he's like, that's the only way I could, I could keep my fucking san- sanity. Yeah, definitely. It's about those healthy limits. And then um, the other part of it is people get, you know, you're kind of talking about it's uncomfortable, yeah. right? To sit yeah. there. So the uncomfortable ability comes from the fact that you never practice it. Right, we never stop or slow down or take deep breaths, and really, what that is is activation of the parasympathetic system. And so, when you're constantly in a chronic cycle of sympathetic nervous system activation, you have this heightened level of stress, right? And and some people can do really well and stay. You know, there's two sides to stress: you stress is stress to get your edge, that's the good kind, and then there's distress, which is the bad stress. And so some people are really good. They can stay right on the use stress or right on the edge. But the majority of people, when they're sympathetic, sympathetically activated, are over in distress. I've, n- I've never understood the concept of stress. I don't, I don't, it doesn't make sense to me. It's like, okay, you have something to do. You have something to accomplish. And you're telling me you're stressed out. What benefit is there to being stressed? I can't think of one. So like a deadline, like I got like motivation, but like right. people are like, oh, I'm so stressed. It's like, well, don't don't be stressed because it's not going to help you solve your problem. It's going to make it harder. Right. So you see. So here's the thing. Stress is a perceived emotion. Right. Ooh, people are choosing. <laughs> they're choosing to be stressed. Right. Yeah. Because like I, I talk about it all the time and I've, I've had people actually in my lectures say, well, you didn't take away my stress. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm not here to take away any of the stress in your life, right? Like, it's just going to get worse, right? Like, as we get older and we get more responsibilities, as we do different things, as more technology comes our way, I can't take away your stress, but I can help you see your stress in a different way, right? That's, That's the purpose of my work and what I do is to help people understand that they don't have to be a victim of their circumstances. Yeah. And that mindfulness gives us really more of a power to not... Uh, emotionally overreact to what's stimulating us um, right in front of us on a day-to-day basis. Instead, we can rationally respond. Yeah, I mean, people are like, oh man, I can't sleep, I can't eat. I'm so freaked out. It's like, what? I don't understand. I just, I don't get it. Maybe yeah. I'm, 
the crazy person, but no, no, no. You're actually you're seeing your stress I mean, in a way that's wandering. not affecting it's, you. It, essentially, it's a, a you're stuck in a loop of mind wandering. Because don't try you, to PhD us. I'm don't just do it. saying. Don't do it, JT. I, as soon as you said, I can't sleep, can't eat, I tried to think about the times where I was there, and it was because I was repeating in fast forward. Or creating the end result of the situation you're in, like creating, yes. like recreating, yes. or, oh, here's what's going to happen. Yeah, here's, oh here's, my God. here's like, the okay, outcome. Yes, yeah, spend your time and focus on like how you're going to solve your problem rather than, oh, man, I'm so freaked out. Right, but you, but some people, right? Their mindset and the way um, they're in that iPod, right? They're yeah. just they can't break free of it, and so that's why this is such a valuable tool, is because it really helps you get more grounded in the moment you're in, and when you really step back and realize the moment you're in, the, the other, I, I think, power to it and gift that it gives you is you see some of the awesome things that are going on right in front of you that before you were mind wandering right through. Right? right, like that moment with your girlfriend or your kid or your I started coworker. becoming very conscious of how much I was just tuning out and yeah. not even listening to and then just agreeing like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like, oh, oh. Yeah, that's just well, that's, putting that's, off the inevitable. Step, you you're just put, you're putting things <laughs> off. No, this is step one. Yeah. Like you're on your way to the conversion, yes. like awareness. I'm converting. Step one. I don't know that I like this version of JT. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I'm gonna be I'm gonna be smarter, and then it's gonna be scarier for you. You'll never be smarter than me, though. <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. I wouldn't count you. Well, not even close. I, uh, let's I ask, let's ask the doctor. Who do you think is smarter, just based on on looks, right now? Oh, well, who do you well, think well, is smarter? Well. <laughs> what the fuck kind of question is that? That I, that, that hey, needs to be on the shirt. Way, by the way, Ross Baker is wearing a drum titty shirt right now, so I'm obviously you, gonna win this. <laughs> hold on, Ross. Who do you think is smarter right he now, has, based on he's, looks? He's got. That's great. That's good. He's That's got, a good one. He's got he's got a sunglass strap and he's wearing sunglasses around his neck. I am taking this call one home. Crokey. N- notice how Ross, you didn't throw yourself in this conversation either. <laughs> I didn't. I'm above them and I know it. They know it. And uh and I'm I we're all fine with that in, in this place in life. I think look, if I if I'm able to be honest and realistic about myself and other things, like uh jt for example if, if you're looking for a best friend who's never going to leave your side the rest of your life and who's going to battle shit out with you that's the guy baker if i'm stuck on the side of a fucking mountain and i've got to survive and that guy's going to get me meat and get me down the mountain safely it's probably baker's compliment life. you've ever given me thank you for that oh, wow. but i can also yes. get you meat and make you survive for us no you can't uh, you, you 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 can't. are you and are I love a you, functional but... healthy individual that will start hunting with a crossbow this year there's nothing wrong with you. Get rid of that <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm 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 realistic about my friends and and uh, you know if I'm going smarts wise out of the BRCC crew I'm, I probably got Evan at one in that one yeah. and uh, and Matt at two. Matt at <laughs> two. Come on. He's a he's a, he will surprise oh, you, man. I, I spent you know two months. I, I I spent two months with him. You know, helping him write his book, and uh, that guy is really fucking intelligent, and it's surprising. And, and a lot of people don't know until you meet him in person. But I think that's an honest assessment of everybody. Uh, I'm probably the most narcissistic in the group. To <laughs> probably be real. nobody. Like, <laughs> hey, Dave, can you pull up? Can you pull up the uh, definition, the the dictionary definition of probably? Uh, yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna throw this up real quick. Rod. We got your picture on the screen. Uh, for the doctor, you know, oh. uh, yeah. I, I was going to refrain from commenting <laughs> almost, on that. Although I did see, a, I did see the picture. So <laughs> probably is you're, that, you're is welcome. that on the screen, Dave? <laughs> Do we have that on the, on the recording? And the definition <laughs> says almost certainly as far as one knows or can tell. Okay. So Ross is probably the most narcissistic. Okay. Uh, Dave, what is the definition of certainly? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, look. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll undoubtedly, I'll there we go. There we go. We're back. We're, we found the definition for you, Ross. It's certainly. We've got a doctor in the house. I'm not going to lie to a doctor. Yes, that, that's, that's and probably true. The antonym true. to certainly is possibly. <laughs> possibly, yeah. Yeah. No, but, um, no, but, but in all honesty, doctor, like, uh, you know, since you're on the show, like, I, I know what my problems are. A lot of them stem from what you're saying. So I feel like. Uh, I'm a father. I feel like I spend too much time on the phone and I feel guilty about yes. that. A lot of it's work. Um, and I don't, 
a friend of mine said on another podcast, and I think she had a great point when she said it, where she said phones for, for parents are like the new alcohol, mm-hmm. where you're worried about being an alcoholic in front of your kid, or you're worried about just spending too much time on the phone in front of your kid so that when they grow up, all they remember is, well, dad had his fucking phone out during every single event that we were at and we were spending time yes. together. That's one that I probably struggle with the most. Sleep, for sure. I maybe get... Uh, four to six hours a night. Uh, I wish I was like Baker and I got eight because I, I think you're correct. You really do need eight. Even though I function at a high rate and it's fine, mm-hmm. I, I'm still you know, fighting it with coffee and strike force and other things throughout the day. Yeah, uh, exactly. Um, exactly. Well, but those are the two biggest things that I worry about. And then yeah. letting go of things in the past. And that's what I wanted to ask you about next. Right. Um, I have a hard time of letting things go from the past, even if it's little tiny things like insults or things like that. Like, I, my memory is better than Santa in that regard, and it, you know, I, I don't know if I don't know if everybody's like that, where you remember shit and you're just like, or that awkward moment where you've had. Have out you in public. seen the movie MacGruber? No. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah. Know. He, uh, there's MacGruber. He was in it. No, no, no. Oh. He memor MacGruber memorizes uh, a license, license plate. plate. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And that's Ross. Yeah. That is Ross. And then he has a whole yes, notebook is. dedicated to this license plate. And he ends up yeah. finding okay. the car and setting it on fire so, later in the like movie. Like Charlie Babbitt from Can Rain Man. Yeah. People, crimes and, and, uh, and punishments dictated against Charlie Babbitt. Got it. Okay. Pinched and squeezed and hurt my neck. Shaping who, who you are. Okay, got it. Okay. Yeah. So if, if that's my honest assessment of, of myself to you. And, uh, and I think that's pretty accurate. I, I'm, I'm not, I don't, I'm not thinking I'm leaving too much out. No, that. well, I would say first thing with the sleep. So are you productive, you know, late at night? Is that kind of why you don't sleep? Extremely. Okay. Yes. So yes. here's something to think He's about. He's on though. a very shifted schedule. Like he stays up till two to four and then sleeps. Okay. Shifted from all uh, yeah, of us. And I, okay. I, I, I usually I usually get up around 730. I, I go to sleep on average, probably in the 2.30 range. I, I, and I usually get up at 7.30 because I've got kids and I, I take one of them to school. Okay. Well, think about it this way. I just told you the science on with respect to mind wandering. So think about your day and how much of that is wasted being distracted, right? Especially if you're on your phone for a big portion of it. So if you're trying to say, well, I just don't have time to sleep because I have too many other things to do. One thing that I like to say is when you gain a skill like mindfulness that helps you mentally exercise your attention system, do those mental push-ups, keeps you more in the moment, you get time back. Because some of those tasks you're doing, you're mind wandering through half of it. So you're not as efficient or productive at getting it done. So maybe that, you know, this skill set can then help your pro- productivity get focused a little bit more. So then you create maybe an extra hour or two to go to bed. Yeah, something that would generally take you two hours once you start practicing this will only take you one. You know, and that's, a, that's kind of what I got out of the talk yesterday is, you know, you're going to go out there and get reps, but you need quality reps. And these are, you know, so if you're going to invest in some endeavor, you make sure that they're quality and it'll probably save you time, a little bit more efficient, mm-hmm. opening up your calendar for more things. Exactly. You know, even um, having your phone next to you, right? Here's two things. When you work on your computer, do you leave your email up, right? So then it bings at you, right? I do. Worst thing. I, I, I did too. Really? Yeah. Worst thing for your distraction. Is it? Yes, that. because here's the thing. Like every time it just gives you that little flash, you know, like a, a little highlight. This is what just came in. Mm-hmm. Your mind is going to go to that and say, oh, that's Bob. Oh, I owe this to Bob. Oh, I forgot to do this with Bob. Or, oh, I'm mad at Bob, right? You're going to be emotionally tied to it in some way. You're going to have a a reaction. Exactly. No matter what it is. Or, oh, that's annoying. I can't believe another advertisement from such and such, right? It will distract you. So you need to turn it off. The other thing, don't even have your cell phone like near you when you're trying to be productive. Because some of the latest research says that 20% of our attention is automatically like, you know, distracted because of our cell phone being on us or near us because our mind will constantly go did i just hear something did that come from my phone did someone like my face or if you keep it on mute you're constantly looking well like i was just gonna say in a meeting if it buzzes uh i'm now i checked out for five minutes Uh because i'm like who was that yeah oh it could have been this person maybe it was a notification from bumble or or, oh no i'm not on bumble that was an example i'm not on any of those thank you (laughs) You know, it's interesting though. You're talking about the phones, and you know, and Ross, you brought up the comment about you know parents at a mm-hmm. soccer game and their you know their kids. If you look at older generations, like my grandfather, they can recite the years that things happened. 
like this. Bam, 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 bam. And I think that the today's generation and whatnot, like their memories aren't as good because they live life through life through a screen. And I cannot tell you how many hunting trips I've been on that we were filming and the memory was through the lens and not through my eyes. And I don't remember shit. I've got a couple turkey hunts that like I've watched uh on film and like, man, I have no You don't even remember being there. No. Yeah. I don't remember that at all because I was staring I'm trying to sh- yeah, you know, shoot I, a turkey and I, watch through the lens I and stuff. Caught myself when Travis was doing the double backflip 360. Like I kept filming it with my phone, and then I I finally was like, you know what? I'm putting this away because I want to watch this. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And everybody else has their phones out. I'll get it from them, but I'm gonna watch this with my right. with my own eyes. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. It definitely has an impact on your experience, your memory of the experience. Mm. You know how you were engaged in the experience. I talk a lot about being mentally present. You know, if you look at There's a lot of research today on being lonely, right? And we have obviously a a lot of really smart, really popular people that are choosing suicide as an option. And most of the time that you would look at them and say, oh my gosh, but they've got all this love around them and all these people around them and all this money and all this happiness. But they're really lonely because they're not mentally present and engaged, Right. If they're if you're constantly inside your head and if you think of your attention system like a flashlight, right, it can be externally focused at whatever is most prominent in your conscious experience, like what's going on in front of you. But it can also be internally focused at those thoughts, feelings and emotions. And when you start to just your attention system is always inward, right, you're not even seeing all the goodness that's right in front of you. And so it can lead us down these really uh, distraught psychological paths. And so. Um, we need to break free from that. We need to start experiencing life for what it has to offer right in front of us. Do you see a trend though? Like, you know, a lot of the things like I've said, there's stress and things like that. You know, I don't understand them. I wasn't always like that. The I'm 43 now, the older I get, the more mature I get, I get a little bit wiser. Life experiences tend to, you know, be a little bit more broad. The list is longer. Um, like I just think the older I get, there's a, a better version of myself than I was in the past. Like, my, I think my emotional IQ is much higher, you know, um, and some, but do, do you see these traits that you're talking about going away with time or as people get older, they can deal with things in a different way or, or, or you're not looking at them that way? Well, I think it just depends on the individual. Mm-hmm. Like you maybe are more of a mindful individual than you probably thought before I walked in here. Right? Like it sounds like you have some different hobbies and Rituals. activities, yeah. right? Rituals, yeah. exactly. Habits where you're present, mm-hmm. right? Hunting, a lot of people say, oh, I'm, I'm not mindful. I could never meditate. But they're big time hunters, right? What are you doing when you're sitting there for a really long time, right? Like that. Yeah, can, that's, a great, that, that's a great point. Yeah. Or yeah. fishermen. What, what are you right? doing? What yeah. are they doing? Yeah. 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 yeah, a lot of people enjoy those activities. And it, I think it's because that's when they're in the moment. Yeah. Right. They, you wouldn't enjoy hunting if the whole time you were sitting there or fishing or running. If the whole time you were doing those activities, you were stressing out. Yeah. So we leave on the fifth. My, one of my best friends and I, we leave on the fifth for a week in the Selway Bitterroot uh, wilderness area. And um, I, I cannot I can show you text strings. We're like, dude, we have no cell coverage. Yeah. I cannot wait. Six days, no cell phone, no nothing. We, and it's, it, it, it's funny now because in years past. Like, what are you most looking forward to? Being out in the wilderness with my friends, you know, doing this, you know, primordial thing that, you know, you know, our forefathers did to feed their families. And I'm pumped about not having a goddamn cell phone that works. Yeah. Because you need it. Your body yeah, is craving I, I, it. Yeah. yeah. I, I, was, I was at a dinner two nights ago, and I, I said that exact thing to my, my best friend was just like, uh, he doesn't use a, a phone that much at all. And I was like, man, how do you do it? And he's like, well, can you remember the time, the last time in your life when you didn't have coverage and you couldn't use it? And I was like, yes. And he goes, how great of a day was that? And I was like, fuck, man, it was probably one of the best days yeah. I've ever had. And it's, it's simply because you, you, nobody can get a hold of you and you know and then, it. So and it's, then when the you phone do is, get service, is dead. Like you can look at their texts and stuff that come in and people that normally can't get in touch with you, like you can follow that, that train. And it's like they start to panic. Where are you, man? Trying to get in touch with shit. And you're like, hey, man, what's going on? Like, oh, don't worry about me. I got to take care. It's like, oh, so it wasn't yeah, an emergency. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't the end of the world. Right. <laughs> well, you got to tell, you got you to give him the exercise now. I want the exercise. You want yeah. the exercise? Yeah, are, we, are we really going so to do the I'm exercise? So far, I'm one day I love it. and it works. <laughs> I, I love it. Okay, okay. So I'll set it up like I, like I did yesterday. We are going to do a mindful minute, right? Because we've been talking about mindfulness. 
And if I let you and all your listeners go without having practiced it, right? Like you might walk out after this podcast and think, I want to try it, but I don't know where to start. So I'm going to take that excuse away from you. We're going to start right now. Okay. So here's a couple ground rules. The first thing everybody needs to realize is that it is not a magic bullet. It's not a panacea. It's not going to solve all your problems today. So I ask that everyone refrains from at the end of the minute thinking something like, well, psh, I do not feel amazing. So it totally didn't work. Right. So don't go that way with it's your mind. micro doses. Yes. You yes. start doing it a lot over over the course of the day and then you're like, oh. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. The repetitive use of it as a as a tool becomes the benefit. Keep so, in mind, most of the people are listening in their cars, so we got to mod- modify it to right, how they can right. do it. Well, in their car. well, you can um, you can still anchor on your breath. You just don't you don't close yeah. your eyes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. So then the next kind of ground rule is that in order to practice uh, mindfulness, you need to be present and aware of the moment that you're in. And so you can do that a couple different ways, right? Uh, we can focus all our attention on something that's with us right here and right now. And so the easiest thing to do that with is our breath, right? Because everybody has it, right? I don't have to get anyone to stop and equip themselves, right? And it's free, so you don't have to pay anything for it. I'm going to teach you how to use a tool that is readily available and free. That's your breath. So what we're going to do, though, is to tell you, to, you know, telling you to focus on your breath is kind of nebulous, So I want you to pick a sensation of your breathing. So maybe it's the way the air goes in or out of your nostrils. Maybe it's the rise or fall of your belly or chest, right? But pick a single sensation of the breathing mechanism, okay? And then what I want you to do is I want you to visualize your mental push-ups. Like you are strengthening your attention system to stay focused in the present. So you're focusing, you're taking those deep breaths, you're focusing on the air and out of your nostrils, your mind starts wandering. You start thinking about what's going to happen later for dinner or what happened yesterday that you regret. Whatever it is, as soon as the mind starts to get distracted, you're going to become aware of it and then bring it right back to your breath. And then you're going to focus on your breath again. You're going to get distracted again. And that doesn't mean you're doing it wrong. OK, it's it's completely normal to get distracted in mind wander. And then the key is being aware of the distraction back to your breath. And then every time it goes off focus and then back to focus, that is a push up for your mental, your your uh, mental strength for your attention system, if that makes sense. And so really, this is one of those things where you may do a lot of reps at first. And the more you practice it, the longer you'll be able to hold your focus and your attention before you get distracted. That's kind of the goal. But it's also a day-to-day thing, right? Like even I practice mindfulness and there are some days and I'm like, man, I really suck today. <laughs> I could not keep my focus because maybe there's a lot going on in my life, which means I need it even more, right? Those people that say, oh, I was horrible at it. I shouldn't do it. They're the ones that need it the most, right? Because of all that noise inside their heads and all of the stories that are being told. So, all right. So remember, not a one shot like magic pill. This is kind of an introduction, although you may feel some benefits. And then, you know, anchor on the breath and then see those mental push ups. You guys ready to try it? Ready. Okay. So, so (laughs) wherever you're at. How do we tell if we win? It is not a competition. You, the way you feel afterwards. (laughs) We're all winners. What do we do with our hands? <laughs> you can, you want to put them in it like a symmetrical way. So if you're driving your car, you know, putting them like symmetrically on the steering wheel, wheel would be a good um, use of, of your sensory for your hands. Maybe you put them on your lap, um, either both palms down or both palms up, or you can even kind of clasp them together, but just in a sym- symmetrical way. You kind of want to make sure you're you're s- kind of sitting up straight. This is not an exercise sit to up straight, s- Dave. slouch and fall asleep. All right, so kind of sit up straight. Kind of almost feel like you're kind of lifting your head up a little bit lighter on your neck. And then if you have the option to close your eyes, close your eyes, but please, anybody in a car, do not, or on a bike or running, (laughs) please don't do that part of it. Just in those cases, maybe focus intently on, you know, the road in front of you um, and just kind of keep um, your attention right in that direction, but really feeling the sensations of your breath. All right, so here we go. We are going to do a mindful minute. I will have you begin and then I will bring you out of it. All right, and go.
and stop. All right. How do you feel right now? Any, anyone in comments? A little weirded out. Yeah? yeah. yeah. Was it uncomfortable for you? Uh, I felt a little vulnerable. Yeah? Not well, I didn't know what was going around. I mean, I started th- thought about JT at one point. That was weird. I thought about Ross. I didn't like that at all. I thought about Logan. <laughs> and then, like, I, I kept thinking about people crashing. I, 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 I just <laughs> thought about my belly button. Uh, oh, man. I really hope that didn't happen. No, that's where my breathing is. I breathe bre- that, yeah. No, that's good. You can think about your belly button. Belly button is Yes. You can actually, you can meditate on your right big toe. Right? Like, everybody right now, f- focus on your right big toe and all the sensations that your right big toe is providing you. Right? Maybe it's hot. Maybe it's cold. Maybe it's hot, itchy, um, tight, whatever it is, right? Everyone's thinking about the right big toe right now. No sensations. You have no sen- Then you're just mm. not human. Perfect right toe. <laughs> <laughs> no, where, where I noticed the big thing was during conversation because, you know, me, I started building, you know, a blimp in my head and I realized I'm not listening to anything. And then I went back to breathing like three times and then I got back in. I was like, all right, all right, I'm, I here, would, I'm here, I'm here, I would I'm here. See, I, so and it was now strange, I'm building like a I, contraption that's launching a, a trash can over the wall. Like, I, uh, I was I'm thinking about JT, and like, uh, it was weird. Like, I got drifted a little right, and then I was like, no, get back center. And then I started thinking about Ross, but I was drifting a little bit left, and I was like, get back center. And then like something with Logan popped in my head, and I felt my head kind of going up, and I was like, bring your ass down. <laughs> and then I just started thinking about my belly button. Yeah, Ross is definitely Did wet. that then f- keep your attention? The belly button? I breathe. I belly yes. breathe. There you go. So you just needed that anchor point. Yeah. And, and not that the, those distractions were bad, right? They're your, you did at least three push-ups. Well, right? more than that. I also thought about what I looked like on camera. <laughs> <laughs> While your eyes were closed? Yeah, I was like, you know, people are weird. You know, you know people that talk with their eyes closed, it's annoying. I mean, if, if Dave just cuts like 45 seconds from that portion and puts that on Instagram, like, check out the new episode. <laughs> it's just us. They've all been hypnotized. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Find out nice. why no one's talking. Uh, yes, there you go. Watch what happens. That's the oh, ad. Oh, Ross nice. Patterson learned how to hypnotize. Watch <laughs> Baker and JT act yeah. like idiots. Uh, well, Ro- Ross, how was it for you? What are you any comments? S- y- yes. So, I- I- is it we- is it weird if you're thinking about your own self for a minute? Like- <laughs> no. No. In what way? Completely dead serious. In what way? So. Um, God, I can't even believe I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this, but uh, there's something soothing about you in your voice that I'm like, yeah, I'll just be honest as fuck today. Um, I was in People Magazine today, and I thought about that for the full minute of how rad that was. <laughs> Dead serious. So it didn't work at all for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it, it, it did. But I was just like, man, awesome. I, I think everything that I'm doing, oh, Dave, w- like, the one with the uh, work wise, is correct. With the, with the, with the, uh, the, no, 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 the, uh, the dolphin head. Dead serious. So, so yeah. I, can I break that down a little bit? So, yeah. one of yes. the. What the? <laughs> they're, they're, they're showing you. It's more a pictures. romance novel for dudes. <laughs> Whoa! I'm sure there's a big story behind that one. That's not Ross, is it? <laughs> Ew, uh, well, okay. Well, 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 Dave, did you do it? Did you participate? No, Asshole. he was watching. He was watching this. He has to drive the ship. We were hypnotized. Yeah, but th- he can't crash yeah, the ship. Yeah, yeah geez, Baker. Definitely, well, definitely. Well, we're I like gra- this way better yeah, yeah, but, now that we can but, hear but Dave. F- fire away. Yeah, so, F- fire so away. Let, Ross, let me what, know what that What I means. would say is, um, so, I mean, the real root of mindfulness is, as, you know, uh, Chachi was saying, like, we're trying to build these reps, right? So that when we're in those high stress moments, we've built the mental strength to really keep ourselves in the moment. And maybe you only need to take, like, one deep breath and snap yourself out of those stories and the, you know, negative mind wandering that's going to happen when we're under high stress. So you can bring yourself back to the moment and truly perform at high levels. So the other aspect though of mindfulness is it really gives us this tool of solitude and self-reflection. And so maybe that's kind of where you went, which doesn't mean it's wrong, right? Um, There can be a productive place of self-reflection, one that is without judgment, right? So if you were kind of thinking in a way that was like, I feel really, you know, I, I have gratitude for what this opportunity had given me, right? And it does. That, that's exactly that's exactly what it was. So, like, uh, it was about the show. Uh, actually, the show you're on, Drinking Bros Podcast, is in People Magazine. And to me, like, it's become, it, the show keeps getting bigger and bigger. This was validation of, like, great. Everything, all the crazy shit we do on this show on a weekly basis keeps getting bigger and bigger. And uh, and I was 
uh, proud of that moment. So that's what I was thinking about. There you go. So, but that's were you bringing space. yourself back? What, what, what do you mean? What was I, I bringing myself understood. back? Did, no, 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 no. I, I, I did. Did like, you keep? I, did I, you I drift my... and then bring yourself back to the breathing? Yes, I did, and like surprisingly, I, I felt better um, because there's been a lot going on today, and I was just like, "Oh, all right, awesome." But how can it be that easy? But um, now start and, trying that, that, it like every you know five, ten times an hour, not for a full right. minute, so, and, but and, for a, you know, yeah, thirty seconds. And this is what I this is what I wanted to ask you. So, how long should somebody continuously do this throughout the day? How many moments? So, most of the research leads us to believe that 10 to 12 minutes a day is the sweet spot. And you can either do that in one chunk of 10 to 12 minutes, or you can do it, you know, 10 to 12 individual minutes throughout your day. Park your car a little further while you're running, while you're taking your morning walk, while you're, you know, um, just out in nature or sitting at your desk like you can find spaces for these these minutes um, but the key is the the breath so I think you also and some of you might have tapped in to this idea of the power in our breathing which is why I like to anchor mindfulness on our breath because you know there's a lot of research that just deep breathing helps us and benefits us in so many different ways our oh, well-being absolutely. our ability to prevent illness you know chronic illness and so when you, you know, on any given day, we only use about 20% of our lung capacity. So if you're practicing 10 minutes of mindfulness, you are taking those deeper breaths and really accessing a different part of your lung space and capacity that can be so powerful for your overall well-being. So that's also important. I don't know when the last time any of you just stopped and took some deep breaths. Well, well so, yeah. That's, that's why I was breathing I'll, too much. I'll, so my thing is, like, when I take deep breaths, I want to fill my entire lung space. I want to feel the the diaphragm fill up. Yep. That's why I was saying belly button. Because if I focus on my belly button, bringing my belly button to my spine, I fill everything up. That's why I was doing that. No, it's yep. a great sense. You're yep. basically oxygenating your blood, getting more O2 in there. Yep. Well, so, so Doc, so this, this is, uh, you know, our relationship goes back two and a half years now, and, and you absolutely won me over and changed my life with your oxygen mask theory, right? So, so if you could just quickly discuss the oxygen mask, I think that that's a neat way to kind of sum this up and let people understand why being good for you first is important. Right. So, you know, for years I flew airplanes and, um, part of the safety brief is always secure your oxygen mask before helping others. Right. And almost all of our emergencies, the first step is put on your oxygen mask. And I had never translated that to just life. And really, we have to put on our own oxygen masks, right? That self-care piece. And I get it. There's some tough guys out there who are like, Psh, I'm badass. I don't need any more skill sets. Like, I'm pretty good at what I do. Really, you will never truly see where you can go as a human being or your true potential unless you start these some of these self-care you know techniques and skill sets and it really is about putting on the own your own oxygen mask that's how you can lead and serve and do all the other things you want to do in your life better right you can help others you can you know have more time for um devoting to your projects and your passions and your activities because when you take care of yourself, you're going to be well prepared, not only from the distraction point of view, but from an overall health point of view to, to truly be high performing in your life. So, yeah, put on that oxygen mask, man. Absolutely. I like it. I, I get one last question for you, um, because only because I, I enjoy doing this and I did it maybe a week ago and it's it's unbelievably helpful. What do you think of those sound deprivation chambers? Isolation like those, uh, chambers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Um, I like it, it's a uh, the thing here is called f like float. So you float in this. It's all salt water based. You shut the thing. There's no phones. There's no sounds. Uh, it's entirely black. What are your thoughts on that? So I have not experienced it yet, and I really don't. You know, I'm uh, the type of researcher I like to like live it, experience it before I, I really give uh, my full opinion. So I am coming, like this is coming from a place that, of lack of research in the area. But I think the basic concept um, can be, you know, very powerful and, and, and good for people. It's, it's an ice, you know, like it, there is something good to be said for, or something um, to be said for separating ourselves a little bit. But it's what you do in those moments, right? Because... You could be a high stress person who goes in there and then the whole time it's stressful for you because your mind never shuts off and then it's not going to, you know, you're not going to probably get the, the benefits that you would want to see from that type of they've, experience. They've done uh, some research. I think it was some SEAL teams did some stuff where they can, they can pump in music, positive thought, 
they did a lot of stuff with like language and they seem to be pretty effective. They actually, we, they have a couple out at the facility we were at yesterday. Um, so I would say the results that they're getting would be even better if before they went in there, they also trained them in this type of skill of, you know, just focusing on the moment they're in yeah. and separating from the thoughts. You're going to get the real experience. You bet. Yeah. JT sold on it. I'm going to try it. I've, I've, I've been sold on this for, for two years. Yeah, I, I, I briefed this to, to, to everybody and just the oxygen mask concept. It's not about being selfish. It's not about being greedy. It's about being smart and smart use of your energy. And so just get right with you first before you ever think about being right for anybody else. I mean, like legitimately changed my life, Doc. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I hope some of your listeners are gleaning well, some of that. Them, tell them how they could find you. Did you get on Instagram today? Yes. I, I did. I have some questions about Instagram, though. So after this, you're going to have well, to help tell, take, yeah. take the newbie through Let Instagram. Let them know. Let them know to find you there. So, yeah. So hopefully Instagram soon. Um, I am on Twitter at Janelle McCauley. I also... How do you spell that? J-A-N-N-E-L-L-M-A-C. A U L A Y. That's a PhD name if I've ever heard one. <laughs> Janelle. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, I also am on LinkedIn. I use that platform to kind of post um, that and Twitter, both to kind of post some of the uh, recent research in the human performance space. I also like to sometimes post provocative content to have discussions about our relationship with technology, how we connect. Uh, and then, yes, a lot of stuff in the, the mental landscape. Um, I also have a website, JanelleMcCauley.com. Uh, you can find more information on some of the recent media events and some of the other podcasts I've been on and um, my TED Talk. I have yes. a TEDx talk. So awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a 12 minute version that sums up my experience as a pilot and then the research and how mindfulness is an oxygen mask for high performance. So yeah, check that out as well. And all right, and, uh, Jan Janelle, this, this is the, this is the point in the show where we get to the drink and bro of the week. Jared, uh, do you want to explain it to her and, and, and have her right, uh, dedicate so, the drink and bro of the week uh, to someone? Every, every show we do the drink and bro of the week, which is somebody that you feel is deserving of uh, a shout out uh, that did something to get you where you are today. Or inspiration, inspiration, yeah. Anything, inspiration, yeah. somebody that helped you, yeah. you know, educationally or inspired you to become the person you are today. Oh my gosh, so much pressure because I have so many Don't things. Don't give us the answer we want to hear. Give us the answer that you want to give. The well, person maybe we should all it. take a minute. <laughs> take a minute. Maybe, 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 uh. maybe you should do a meditation real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I love that like do do my do my own meditation to get clarity of thoughts right I do I have like so many different um thoughts that are popping in my mind but I you're you're telling me I, I can only pick one yeah, for yeah. Now. one one yeah. for now my drinking bro um oh pressure a professor um <sighs> somebody we're in the military with yeah there's there's you know there's a few quite a few people who took a chance on my so you realize that what i've studied is very odd the for the military just because yeah, so many people are so husband. many people are going to be hitting you up Too obvious. <laughs> <laughs> just oh, go with the husband yeah. you know you know he was the first thought that popped in my Perfect. mind and i thought that would be cheesy no i, go with, I, no, like, I know, would go with okay, it okay can i can i just it's not cheesy can, can i just yeah. say why because I have always been the odd duck, right? Especially in the circles that I swim in, right? I'm around military and then special operators, and I'm the one that usually is talking a little bit about this crazy Voodoo idea. Of, yeah, you got to eat better, better, <laughs> and you got to meditate, and you got to do all these things. Who's that girl my, studying voodoo? <laughs> my husband has not only been a super supporter, but he's been on the journey with me. When I'm like, hey, let's meditate together. Hey, why don't you talk to your, he's a, a colonel in the Air Force, talk to your airman about how you meditate, and he's on board 100%. We even, and I know this is going to be crazy for your audience, but we do a lot of um, plant-based eating in our in our house. And my husband, who is a steak and potatoes guy at, at some point, um, has gone on that journey with me. No, no, he we feels just have amazing, to we have to clarify. You're just a vegetarian. You're not a vegan. Right. We're I, more well, so against that. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. And the, yeah. and the vegan no, cat movement specifically. Oh, yeah. No, I have nothing to do with that. <laughs> nothing to do. No, I, I, I will even say I'm like 80% plant based, right? That is yeah. just the majority of what I eat because it it's makes me feel cheese. good. Yeah. Like every once in a while, I just yeah. know that there's certain things that don't make me feel good. Cheese is one of them. So, but you do but, eat meat. 
I'll eat it every once in a while if I cook it. Like I'm really weird about it. Source? So um, we do a lot of lentils and I do a lot of um, quinoa. Yeah, I know. Crazy vegetables do have a lot of protein in them as well. But I do eat a little bit of fish. You don't argue too, with her, too. Baker. She's I, a doctor. I, hey, so is, so is my brother. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, all these crazy ideas. My husband's always been like on board. And so he really is. My drink. He's my drinking bro. Awesome. What's his name? Ah, Chris. there we go. That's awesome. Colonel Chris Macaulay. Chris. Yeah. Macaulay. Drinking bro of the week. What's Cheers. Hey, what size of fella is he? Mm, he's about six foot. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Tim, kidding. you have a podcast. Where can people listen to that? And what's it called? Uh, yeah, so uh, so some uh, some of the leadership stuff that I've been developing, a lot of it with Colonel McCauley. She and I kind of collaborated when we were at Joint Base McGuire Dix Lakers. But if you want to check out some stuff and just think about your understanding of expectations, people use it as a bad word. I have a podcast called Cape Lead. It stands for Care, Alignment, Perspective, and Expectations. So we're on we're on Google, we're on Apple, doing all that stuff. So Cape lead.com also and then uh, Twitter uh, at Tim Pachesa check it out and 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 just as a, a context to him he's I, I I will give you guys he's he's one of those TACP leaders that we've had for many many years that he's like Patton if he told us that we had to march on Capitol Hill we would all not question him and we would grab our stuff and go <laughs> so uh, taking his <laughs> advice on leadership is uh, definitely something I recommend I appreciate that. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, hey, guys, we appreciate you being on. We, we appreciate you being on Drinking Bros. Jared, I want to give you a special thanks, man. You hit me up about how excited you were to have this guest on. Usually we have like strippers and low class people. This is one of the <laughs> easily one of the most high class shows we've ever had. So listen, I started you, the Jared. breathing exercises and got smarter. <laughs> I, love Damn. I love it. I love that you're expanding your horizons. Thank you. Yes, for I inviting think this me is going to be a very big deal to a lot of you know our listener base is is highly veterans, first responders, very high stress, high stress people. This is all things that. You know, we've never heard of this before because no, but none of our peers talk about it. So we've got to break them out of the box and get them to, to, to think about things like specifically that that could help them, not just I'm going to drown myself with Jack when I get off work. Yeah, exactly. I, I hope it I will give you my word that I will commit to doing 12, 10 to 12 minutes of this breathing exercise every day until I leave for my elk hunt on the 5th. I want to hear your findings. Okay. Yeah, I love it. I, yeah. I want to hear yeah. your findings. Yep. Me too. And I'm telling I'm you, you don't have to sit down and do it for a whole minute. Ca I you'll won't catch even your, try to do you'll that. You'll catch yourself when somebody's talking to you, thinking about something, and you'll go, bring it back. Okay, well, let's do let's just, <laughs> let, hold on. Perfect. Let's, let's instill a rule right now. Okay. If you see someone doing the, what's it called? The something minute? What do you call it? Mental Mind, minute. Mindful minute. Mindful. If yeah. you see someone doing mindful minute, you cannot fuck with them. Oh, no, I won't fuck with you. Deal? Yeah, that's a deal. Dave? That's a deal. <laughs> Are you putting in your fucking desk today? I had to come back to be on the show with her. It'll be here tomorrow. You said by Close of Business Friday. <laughs> okay, Close of Business Friday. I'm it's just Wednesday, saying. Wednesday, dog. If you, if, Wednesday? You bust, if you bust your, your deadline on that desk, then, then our deal is off until the desk is in place. Well, right, how, no. how about this? How about, about a better deal, right? When you see somebody stressed out, something's going on here, tell them to take some oxygen. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Stop. So, so I use that all stop the time. Like, breathe. stop. You need some oxygen. My my wing commander, Colonel, he he sent me home from work. He's like, Chachi, you need oxygen. I, I said, Boss, you you need to go home I get get it. some oxygen. So, so when people get stressed out or you know things just become insurmountable, grab hey, some oxygen. Dude, we gotta teach Logan. Oh God, we just gotta get, <laughs> we gotta get her to analyze Logan. <laughs>